I'm just going to dust my board and I have this dough that I allowed to rise and then fall. And I love to do it that way because it gives that wonderful yeasty flavor to the bread. And then it also gets these wonderful little bubbles in it that I just love. So I allowed it to rise and then fall. That takes about an hour and a half. If you want, you can just allow it to rise for about 45 minutes and then roll it out. It also gives you a wonderful product. So I've got this great dough and I'm just gonna stretch it out I want this to be kind of rectangular rather than round. Now the difference between flatbread and pizza in general is that pizza has a crust edge and flatbread simply doesn't. Now I'm going to take a little bit of cornmeal and I usually use cornmeal for this when I'm using the grill. If I'm using a pizza stone, I like to use a little bit of cornmeal mixed with flour because it seems to bake better. But on the grill, a little cornmeal will do it. And then let's just lay it right out on that peel. Once our dough is on the peel and the grill is nice and hot, I need to oil that grill and then I'm going to slide that dough gently onto those grates. That flatbread has a little bit of color on it. I just want to remove that for a minute because we're going to flip this over. That will be the bottom. The grilled part is actually going to be the top so that we know that's completely cooked through. This way we'll be grilling the bottom and we know that both sides are cooked completely. Now while that's happening, I'm going to grill some tomatoes. Now I love to use these little copper sheets that go on the grill, but you can also use a grill pan that has very tiny holes. And then we're going to put some cherry tomatoes on that as soon as it gets warm. So now I have all my components for my wonderful flatbread that we're going to serve with this wonderful avareño. Now I have my flatbread here. I'm going to flip that over. You can see that one side is grilled. The other side is still not, not grilled. It's sort of what we would call par-baked. And I'm just going to flip that over. Now on that, I want to go ahead and put my burrata. Now burrata is a wonderful cheese that is mozzarella, but it's mozzarella on the outside, mozzarella curd on the inside. So it's a beautiful cheese that has a lot of texture. So you can kind of see how that is really, really curd-like on the inside. And I want to go ahead and put that on my flatbread. And I'm gonna use two bowls for each one of my flatbreads. And remember, this recipe makes two. So this is about a pound of burrata cheese. And it usually comes in a container that's about a pound. Now let's go back to the grill and grill this up, and then we'll finish it with our tomatoes and our delicious pesto. Now you can see that we're not going for a full melt on this burrata. I want this flatbread to have some texture. So the next thing I wanna do is to add some of this wonderful pesto. And I'll just kind of dollop around. Anytime you're using albareño, I think of green when I think of albareño. It's a wonderful acidity, oh, just this freshness that's incredible. So if you think green with albareño, try these wonderful green things with it. It's just so incredibly delicious. Now a young albareño on the vine will have a little bit of a flavor of grapefruit. There will be lots of citrus. As soon as you start to process it, it starts to take on a little more flavor. Now albareño, a lot of times you'll see with a little bit of carbon dioxide continuing in the bottle. That little bit of effervescence, which is just delicious, and it just reminds you how crispy this wine can be with its acidity. All right, there's our beautiful flatbread. What a tribute to Italy, the red, the green, and the white. And with Albareño, I'm going to expect some wonderful acidity, mm, some beautiful, beautiful fruit, citrus, a little apple, 